Hello and welcome to the Grade 4 Envision Math Scope and Sequence 2019-20 Overview. <laughs> Over the course of the next 7 to 8 minutes, I'm going to highlight for you some of the key features of the Scope and Sequence um, and just let you know what's new, what's different, um, and just make it as user-friendly as possible. This first page likely looks very similar to past years. Um, it lays out for you benchmark cycle dates, teaching days, and topics. You probably noticed that only cycle one has been released so far on the curriculum engine. Um, that is because of all the new updates. We just didn't have time to do those updates for all the cycles yet. But you can see how it's laid out across the year. So even though you don't have the detailed versions of cycles two through four, these are the topics that will be taught during those dates. Although this is the same as in the past, we hear a lot of questions from people. So just to explain the way the dates work, we want to make sure that exactly what is on the benchmark, you've had time to teach. So the benchmark cycle is not the same as the term. We say from September 3rd through November 8th, these are the topics you want to cover. The benchmark window opens that Monday the 12th. So we, at that point, you've had time to teach all of this stuff. The idea is you could give the benchmark that day and then the very next day move on. Well, let's say you don't give the benchmark until the 27th. That's fine, but please don't just keep reteaching, 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 or you'll get way, way behind. To remain on pace as of the 13th, even if you haven't yet given the benchmark, you should be trying to move on to the rest of the topics. Okay, that's the overview page. The next page has the same function as in previous years. It shows you what standards are being taught in cycle one, aka what standards will be tested on the cycle one benchmark. It's a really great reference page for you. These are all of the standards. If you need to look up their language, it's right here. It is organized a little differently than last year though. There are these two main columns. We've got the Pennsylvania column and the Common Core column. I know some schools and networks use PA, some use Common Core, so it's all right here for you. The other benefit of having it laid out this way is that it shows you how they're aligned. So whichever one your school uses, you're teaching the same stuff, you're just tagging it differently. So Pennsylvania has these standards in this gray right here. Those standards align with Common Core clusters. So this is the 4NBTA cluster. And in Pennsylvania, the standard, and in Common Core, the cluster, have fairly broad general language. So to give you more detail and make it more specific, they break it down. So this PA Core standard, 214B1, has these sub-eligible contents. This is what could be tested on the benchmark and on the PSSA. But in addition to telling me what's tested, it tells me what this really means. It gives me more details. Those PA Core eligible content are aligned to Common Core standards. And over here, the A cluster has A1, A2, A3 standards. In Cycle 1, you've got one, two, three PA Core standards that are being taught but you've got a whole lot more eligible content um, that is broken down for you. The other new thing about this page is that it lists for you this bold language, conceptual, procedural, and application. Hopefully those words ring a bell. They are the three aspects of rigor. You likely talked at your school a lot about rigor last year. It is one of the three common core shifts, focus, coherence, and rigor. And when you think about rigor, you think about that three-legged stool. We want to achieve a balance of all three aspects as we teach math. We don't want to be only conceptual, only procedural, or only application. But you don't necessarily have all three aspects on any given day. This tells you each standard is aligned mostly to one or two aspects. So that tells me when I'm teaching for NBTA1 or this PA equivalent, that I want to be focused on conceptual understandings. It's not about procedures and memorization, 
I want kids to understand the how and the why and the models and the, those deep understandings. Similarly down here, I want the conceptual for understanding how to use place value to round. Rounding, we often turn it into a procedure, but really this standard tells me that it's not about the procedure. It's about understanding how numbers relate and place value works so I know how to round. That said, we do have procedural standards too where we just wanna know the facts. So that page can help provide you with that information so you can think about what types of questions and tasks to ask and provide. All right, next page. We're getting into the cycle itself, into the topics. This box at the top is new, but it over, over blah, outlines for you for each topic. So there's a box for topic one, there's a box for topic two. It shows you um, a summary of that topic how many days, and what standards. Then it gives you this information, which I think is kind of cool. The Common Core also tells you, in addition to rigor, whether clusters are major, supporting, or additional. In this case, this topic is aligned to major content. It's a very important topic. And although I allotted for you nine days, which is one day per lesson plus four flex days, because it's major, if you need one or maybe two more days, take it because it's major work. This box over here, I think is really helpful because it tells you, okay, sure, in this topic, I'm teaching this eligible content, but does that eligible content ever come up again? Will I see it in topic two or three or four? I think that's helpful to know because if you will see it again, maybe you don't need to fully master it just yet. But if you won't see it again, I either need to make sure students master it or I need to be really purposeful about reteaching it or incorporating it into later topics. In this case, topic one, nothing is gonna be explicitly revisited. So I need to think about how I can revisit it if students need additional help. As in the past, we list the topic, lesson, number, title, objective, and eligible content. That is straight from the book. You can get that from Envision. What I add to it are these bullets. The bullets are my intention to give you some information, some tips, some tricks, some ideas to help make the lesson even better. So maybe I give you advice about the solve and share or the visual learning bridge, or I tell you that you can reinforce the eligible content later, or I'll tell you what students have used in the past to create coherence. I hope these bullets and tips are helpful. I would love feedback on whether they are or which ones are to math at Villa SD, because as I work on bullets for future um, cycles, I wanna know what's helpful and what's not. At the end of the topic, you have this big topic overview that gives you notes for the whole topic, so make sure you read that before you teach the topic. I also recommend math instructional routines. Those are um, linked on the curriculum engine. If you had Carnegie Specialist, they probably called them number sense routines. They're quick 10 or less minute routines that get kids thinking and talking about math. I recommend ones that are extra aligned to that topic. I also recommend math language routines for that topic. Those are also linked on the curriculum engine. They get kids thinking about math and accessing the language of math. You'll see I tried to bold some of those things when I mentioned them up in the bullets. And that's pretty much it. You'll see that repeated for every topic throughout the cycle. And then you'll get to the benchmark window and then a summary for the year. These are the PA core standards and eligible content and what cycle they appear in. That was a lot of information. It took me a long time to go through it, but I hope it was helpful. I want you to know how these new features are intended to help you so you can use them. Good luck in cycle one. I would love any feedback or questions at math at the last D and have a wonderful cycle number one.